Hello and a big welcome to all our schools from Virginia Beach, Shelton, Greenhorn and Greenwood uh, and school, elementary schools today. My name is Brent Pierre Smith. I have Dangerous Dave on camera and hidden in the tree next to us is a beautiful young male leopard. He's just over two years old and he's caught himself an antelope called a bush buck. And the reason he's put it in the tree is so that the hyenas can't steal it from him. Right, there we go, you can see it's not the biggest tree, so what happened, I think, is he had to put it up the tree in a, a big hurry while being chased by a hyena. But now he's managing to snack on it a little bit. One of the nice things for leopards about keeping their kills in the trees is that, apart from the fact that no one can steal it from you, you don't have to eat it as fast as possible, you can take your time and uh, eat it in little goes um, because you're not at risk of losing it. So he's about two years old. His name is Hosanna, which means the little chief. And uh, he is one of my favorite leopards, so always great to spend time with Hosanna, even though he's showing one of the most important things a leopard has in its defensive and offensive arsenal and that's his camouflage you can see even in a green tree those black rosettes and yellow coloring help break up his outline and make him nearly invisible isn't that amazing okay so while i sit here with this beautiful leopard i'm going to give all you guys a chance to get your leopard questions ready so get your leopard questions ready uh, next time you come to see me i'll be waiting to hear all your wonderful questions but in the meantime scott's got something that's the biggest thing out here in the african bush well hasana is still chewing on that young bushback and every now and then he nearly falls out of the tree because it's not in the best spot uh, that young bushback Unfortunately for him, as I said, I think he put that meat in a big rush up the tree when the hyenas were around. Hello, Haley. Haley is wondering what do leopards eat? Well, Haley, you can see they've got big teeth. And he's eating another antelope, uh, antelope that's a, probably a bit smaller than a white-tailed deer, deer uh, called a bushback. And uh, so leopards eat meat. It means they are carnivores. So carnivores eat meat. And uh, herbivores eat trees or grasses. Now I've got a question for all of you in Virginia Beach. I hope you guys are ready. Are you ready? I want to get these questions through to your teachers as fast as possible. Who's going to be first? Who's going to be the smartest? If carnivores eat meat and herbivores eat trees and leaves, what do omnivores eat? Now get the answer to your teacher and let's see who's going to be correct first. Well, there we go. It seems like the leopard tortoise uh, was trying to hide under Steve's car. Now, of course, they get their name leopard tortoise from their pretty markings on their shell that resembles leopard spots. And there we go. You can see those big, long teeth on the leopard. And I wonder if anyone knows the name of those teeth. If you know the name of the long, white teeth that you can see there. Um, let me know, tell your teacher what are those long teeth called. Now, your dog at home will also have them, so most predators have it. Well, hello Atticus and Elena. Atticus and Elena would like to know how do leopards climb trees. Now, they use their incredible strength and their claws. So you can't see at the moment there on his foot, but he's got very big claws that he'll sink into the bark and then use his muscles to pull him up the tree.
Now leopards often like to leave their kills in, in trees that have got lots of leaves like this, so vultures can't spot it. And that, because even birds can steal the, the food from the leopards, because sometimes while he's eating his, his, his meat, he might get a bit thirsty, so he'll leave it up in the tree and wander off to go get a drink, and he comes back. And the birds have eaten it all, so that's why it's, they're like thicker trees, and they've got a bit of cover in them, uh, that the kill is hidden from even predatory birds. Leopards often like to leave their kills in, in trees that I've got. Well, he's come down the tree faster than Steve could. And uh, he's left some meat up there, but he's decided he's had enough snacking for now. So he's just relaxing at the base of the tree he was climbing in. Now, Steve was teaching you lots about trees there. And uh, he was teaching you about the marilla tree. Now, as I said... The leopard was in a tree called a Tumburji tree, and I'm just going to move the car. We're not going to look at the Tumburji tree that's really close to the leopard. We're going to look at this Tumburji tree over here. Hello, Gabby. Gabby would like to know, do all leopards have the same spots? No, they don't, Gabby. Each individual leopard has its own unique set of spots. Just like we've got our own unique fingerprints, they've got their own unique spots. Here you can see him breathing heavily. Now imagine if you've just eaten a big, big, big dinner or a big lunch and your tummy's very full and you get lazy and you want to go have a nap. That's what he's doing right now. Now, he'll probably finish this today, and then he might even hunt again tomorrow. Hello, Rhymer. Rhymer's wondering how old do leopards live? Well, it all depends, Rhymer, but in the wild, male leopards will normally live to about 12 or 13 years old, and females to about 15 years old. So, and that's normally, but it, it all depends. Sometimes they do get killed when they're much younger, or when they are a lot older. His mom, I think, lived to 13, if I remember correctly. Uh, but his great-grandmother lived to sort of 17, so it all depends. Or his grandmother, not his great-grandmother. Now, a lot of you out there at Linkhorn Park are wondering what is the difference between a cheetah and a leopard. Well, a leopard... There's a bird raiding a nest. And this is absolutely crazy. You can just see it dangling from the nest. And it's trying to get the babies or the eggs out of that nest. How cool is this? And this is actually a young eagle. Oh, it just ate something. Did it? Or was I dreaming? No, I think it was just a leaf. And they've got very long legs that they can actually bend and double joints, bend out of shape in order to be able to get into the funny angles. Now, this is absolutely incredible. Now, what we could also expect to see is possibly some other birds coming in and trying to rescue the baby birds in this nest. Maybe the adults will come back, and if not the adults, maybe some other birds will come and try and give this big eagle a hard time. It's, it's called an African Harrier Hawk, and Seb, who's filming, has spent many years filming African wildlife, and he's never seen anything like this. So that gives you an idea of just how lucky we all are to be witnessing this very, very interesting scene. And of course, it is sad that maybe these baby birds will get eaten from in the nest, but... A lot of animals that live on the planet need to eat meat, which means other animals need to die in order for their survival. And I guess we are the same. A lot of people, just like you and me, also like to eat meat. But it can sometimes be a little bit tricky to watch. 
Well, as you can see, the Harrier Hawk, which is the name of this bird, is having a difficult time trying to get its foot into the kind of bowl of the nest. But I'm fairly certain it can hear the baby birds in there. So it knows there's something in there. It's trying to break the nest apart, but the twigs are quite strong, as you can see. So it's not having much luck. Imagine how tired it is holding on there, hanging on upside down. I wonder if I can't move back ever so slightly. Just so that's the good news. We're just merely watching, just like people like to watch sports matches. We enjoy watching the wild animals here go about their business. Well, it doesn't seem like it's wanting to give up. It, I'm confident it knows that there's baby birds in there. And I'm surprised that no other birds have come over to give it a hard time. Even though it's big, lots of small birds are very, very brave and they'll fly in. And because they're smaller than the eagles, they can be a bit more quick and a bit more agile and peck them on the head and just bother them until they maybe give up. But sadly, the neighborhood is not coming to, res to the rescue. This is absolutely crazy. And this bird actually specializes in raiding nests. It's what it does best. And it's not good at catching fast moving prey. Most of their prey they pluck out of holes and trees or from within a nest like this. Looks like it's trying to get its beacon through a small gap in the branches there. But it's not having any joy. It looks like quite a big hole that it's made there though. Hard to be certain though, but it maybe can't get its beacon deep enough. Kareen, you would like to know what kind of eagle this is. And it's actually strictly, it's not actually an eagle, even though it looks like one. It's called a harrier hawk. So you get lots of different birds of prey or raptors. Um, some are vultures, some are eagles, some are buzzards, some are falcons. But they're all meat-eating birds, and a lot of them do look similar. But officially, if you want to be an eagle, you have to have feathers on your legs. And as you can see, this bird has got long legs without feathers on it. Landon, no, it's not trying to eat its own eggs. It's trying to eat the eggs from a bird called the red-headed forest weaver. That is the bird that is responsible for building this nest. And the weavers are, are very clever birds that can build these wonderful nests where they weave together little pits of branches and grass in order to build their nest. This is actually quite a, a scruffy nest for weavers as far as the weavers go. Absolutely insane. Well, again, it's not giving up. We're going to stay here and keep an eye on it. We'll call you back as soon as any, anything interesting happens. But Steve has found you guys one of the tallest animals we see out here. How amazing is this, boys and girls? We've found the tallest land mammal in the world. Isn't that fantastic? Look how big he is. And he is busy eating leaves. We can't see it in front of him because there's another animal there, but he's disappeared. But that giraffe has got the tallest neck to allow him to eat the leaves from where I was sitting in the tree. Do you remember when I was in the tree? That giraffe can get to that spot in the tree and no one else can feed that high. Isn't that fantastic? So the giraffe will eat leaves, only leaves. And uh, then also when it has to go to the toilet, the pellets that it drops will also be eaten by termites and will go back into the soil. So right now he is busy chewing the leaves to make them a lot smaller, getting lots of saliva around the leaves to help him to digest them. And isn't he beautiful? I say boy because those big sort of horns on the top of his head are bald because he uses them for fighting. I'm very happy I was able to find you a giraffe this afternoon. They are one of the prettiest animals in the African kingdom. Watch him swallow. Oh, and there he did it again. Chewing some more leaves.
Go for just a touch, Sensi. Maybe you can get that kudu. Just there in the bushes. There's a very camouflaged animal. There he is. He also eats the leaves, but look how much smaller he is than the giraffe. The giraffe is super big and the kudu is not so big but yet the kudu is the second largest antelope that we find here and also he's a male with hi everyone and you can see Hasana has found himself a pillow he's very much enjoying that tamburji branch he's lying right up against it using it as a headrest looking very very comfortable little Hosanna. Well, not so little Hosanna anymore. Isn't he? Turning into quite the large chap. I still think um, his half-brother, or Quarantine, was slightly bigger at this age. But I'm not 100% sure. It was a long time ago that Quarantine was a little leopard. Trying to get comfortable with that very fat belly of his. Feeding as he goes, pretending he doesn't mind too much. He's going to walk as close to us as he wants to. Hello, boy. He's going to give us a little show now because he's big, isn't he big? He's very big. His eyes are a little bit open. His tail is not wagging. Hello, boy. Apologies for the pole that's about to come into screen. We do have the roof on. There is a chance of thunderstorms. See, we're right by the marula tree where he wanted to come. And he's going to come as close as he can. He's not in any hurry. He's not concerned. He is absolutely gorgeous. Hello, boy. busy sniffing on the ground to try to find any marulas that might have escaped. The grass underneath this tree is completely flat and dead from, I'm sure, countless elephants trod, trampling it. See to the left of your screen there's some elephant dung there and the grass is all yellow and dead. It's been completely squashed. And he's playing a game of hide and seek. He thinks we can't see him. You feel how the wind has picked up. There's definitely something brewing on the horizon. Elephants absolutely love the wet weather. Here he's coming. Let's see if he's going to get that one marula in the road there. If he can smell it. He doesn't want to come any closer to us. Shame, boy. Oh, he's not very happy. He just told me, don't come any closer, you... <laughs> that is supposed to be very scary and on a big elephant bull or a big cow when they do that the ears actually flap against the side of the body and they make this very sort of loud sort of slapping sound I clearly can't do it with my skin he's coming back again sorry Nix he's just he's being very inquisitive his head is raised he's trying to see us elephants look down their nose at their past or through their tusks so when an elephant lifts its head like this, not being aggressive, it's just trying to see exactly what's going on in front of it. And with the wind blowing like this, there's all sorts of confusing smells in the air. All he wants is the marulas on the floor. And who are these people standing so close to the marula tree, really? The questing of the marula trunk. I was looking for some earlier. I couldn't find any. I had to show the kids only the seed. <laughs> yes, Susan, he's very shy. He's very shy. He really wants to come and play, but he, he just doesn't quite know how to introduce himself. If he just comes out of there and stops playing in the bushes, we can say hello. We can act like adults. We can get along just fine. Yes, we do. Thank you, Brent. We've been This boy's been playing with us for the last, however long it was since you last were with us. Apologies for the poll. 
He's hearing the thunder, <laughs> and he's not liking the thunder. He's smashing trees. He's chasing the giraffe. He's doing some funny backwards kick with his leg every now and again. And he's very proud of himself whenever he chases or smashes something. He walks away with his head held high and his tail stiff and erect. And he walks away looking very chuffed with himself. And now he's just on the other side of this bush and thinks he's in a secure place. But he's very interested. I think he's just lonely. He's quite a young bull. I'd say he's probably only recently been... Here we go. Let's see him smash that tree. Come on. Break one of the hardest woods around, young fella. He's probably just been displaced from from one of the herds, and he's a little bit grumpy about that. He's now busy feeding on a dead piece of wood. There's nothing in there. This is what we call displacement feeding, where he's actually watching me and not what he's doing. Look at his eyes. His eyes are very wide. Can you see that, folks? When I talk about hard eyes, he's very alert towards us, and that is what you always pay attention to in an elephant, especially in an elephant cow. If her eyes are hard like that, you know that she's not very relaxed. But he's just a grumpy young lad who doesn't have any friends or family, so thinks he can just chase and uh, molest and chase whoever he wants to around and thinks there's no repercussions. Yes, Sophia, I love this too. Cheeky elephants are one of my favorite. I think I seem to say that a lot these days, but... Elephants are awesome to be with, but when a young elephant bull starts playing with us, it's fantastic. Oh, yes, Ravinda, his eyes can be very intimidating, and that's something a lot of people don't look at, is the eyes. But they can often tell you far more than, than any other sort of body language the elephant is portraying. There it is. Look how he's looking at us. Very, very cool. You can, I don't know if you can hear the lightning and, or the thunder in the background, but he's challenging it. That was the lightning that just called their apologies for the pole. Let me just roll back a little bit. If I start my engine, he's just going to get excited and try and chase us. Paula would like to know what animals can see in color in the bush, and a lot of them can. All the bird species, I believe. I'm not too sure about owls, but all of your daytime birds, monkeys, baboons, uh, humans, and then they reckon that a giraffe can see in a small spectrum of red. Um, I'm not sure where I read that, but they reckon giraffe can see a small spectrum. And then, what else can see color? Insects, I believe, can see color, but they also mainly UV. So I think that might be it, you know, birds, mammals in the form of monkeys, baboons, and people, because we're in the bush as well. And I'm not sure if elephants can see color. I'm not sure at all about that. It's possible. I wonder if any of the viewers out there can help answer that question, what any animals I might have missed that can see color in the bush. And the per we seem to be a little bit luckier where we are at the moment. We're getting a few spots of rain, but uh, nothing too bad just yet. I mean, we have come across a lovely herd of elephants. I can see about five, four. I can see four at the moment, but it sounds like there's quite a few more spread through the mix, mixed broadleaf woodland. Now, elephants can be quite playful in this weather they do like it when it's a bit cooler hey you there we go enjoying the lush summer vegetation and of course they struggle a little bit more during the winter months hello Mina Mina would like to know, is it true that elephants have a very good memory? Now, this is a, a very contentious subject you're bringing up here, Mina. Uh, uh, oh, yes, yes, you're very naughty. Uh, they have, a, obviously, an, ex, an extensive um, instinctive set of skills when it comes to survival. But I would say, yes, they, they probably do have a decent memory. A very good, I'm not sure. 
but they will remember certain trees or fruiting areas or water holes uh, that come and come into fruit or hold water during very dry periods so yes i'd say that they do, they do have a decent memory and of course they've got such a large brain so it would make sense that they have a greater brain capacity than certain other animals and um, because relative to body size uh, rhino and, and and hippo have relatively small brains because the elephant has a very big brain and of course they are able to use their their trunk extensively as a tool so do they have a good memory better than an impala as good as a chimpanzee oh i'm not sure but yes now i'd say on average they have one of the better memories out of uh, the animal kingdom well i don't know if you can hear that you can hear this this thunder that scott was trying to hear he shall let you listen to it Oh, he's playing! Look, he's got a hat! Oh, it's gone! No, it's back! Dingo would like to know, do adult elephants ever trip? Occasionally. Uh, all animals trip. I've seen lion trip, leopard trip, elephants, rhinos, hippos. Um, they tend to slip quite often, especially when it's wet and they've got to go uh, up or down some steep stuff. Um, they do tend to slip from time to time and they do trip over the old branch or, or hole in the ground. Yes, they, they can trip. Not too often though. We have gone back to the scene of the crime there. You can see a bone at the base of the Tamburti tree that he has. The remains of the kill hoisted up, but no immediate sign of the leopard. So maybe it was kind of just, oh, there you can see the hooves dangling there. Well done, Seb. Um, there's not much left, you I'd be surprised if he's still here in the morning. It'll definitely be worth coming to check it out there and make sure. But there's not too much remaining. So who knows, maybe he just took a very gentle stroll down to a waterhole. Nearby where we went, by all the kind of close ones to have a check for him, but didn't have any luck. Ali, you'd like to know how often leopards have to drink. Um, I guess they like to drink daily, if they can, but that's not to say they need to drink daily. They can probably survive for a couple of days without water. And I guess, again, it'll depend on, you know, how much they've been feeding on the area that they're in, how hot it is or how cold it is. You get lots of hugely different uh, climates in Africa where leopards live. Some are quite cold, high altitude where they probably won't, don't need to drink that much. And you get some very hot areas where they will obviously need to drink a little bit more.